I'm back again for my second last review. <clears throat> and this will be my last major review, but um, anyway, the reason for that is when I double checked the website of my favorite comic book store, turns out Batman Dark Knight isn't coming out this week. It'll be coming out sometime late October, uh, mid October. One thing which Batman Dark Knight was infamous for was its delays. And the fact that it's delayed in its new run already, and it's only up to the first issue, doesn't give me much faith in it. <clears throat> but anyway, on to reviews. It occurred to me yesterday that I didn't have any Green Lantern issues of the New 52. I had uh, at least two issues of every banner. Superman, Justice League... Batman, The Dark, which deals with uh, more horror-type comics, and The Edge, which deals with uh, science fiction, crime, and comics that were formerly under the Wildstorm imprint. But I didn't have any under the Green Lantern banner. You see here how the DC Comics logo is green, Whereas with other comics, it's been various other colors. That's been to uh, show various different bands. Oh yeah, and another banner was uh, Youth Justice, which includes uh, Static Shock and Teen Titans. <clears throat> anyway, on to the view. The fact that Sinestro is on the cover as a Green Lantern implied to me that it was set back in the very early days of the Green Lantern comic uh, story. However, it turns out that he's been captured by the Guardians and given his Green Lantern ring back. So he was still the leader of Sinestro Corps, but the Guardians have taken him back as a Green Lantern. And apparently this is because Hal Jordan has been dismissed as Green Lantern. And so it deals with him trying to adjust to human life. He finds it hard not to jump in at certain situations where someone needs rescuing. However, this leads to a bad situation. As it turns out, he was jumping into a movie set. Now he meets up with his girlfriend, and she talks about how she's been uh, about her time as a star sapphire, so many events of DC Comics have still remained. However, they've stated that uh, events like major events like File Crisis, Identity Crisis, and Infinite Crisis uh, don't exist in this new continuity. <coughs> Anyway, in order to get at least two of them, I also got Green Lantern Corps. Now we start off seeing a prisoner escape or something. Uh, actually, I'm not quite sure what happens. But anyway, two Green Lanterns die. <coughs> And it deals with the theme of Guy Gardner, who, as I might have said, is my favorite Green Lantern. And, uh, Mike, what's his name? The black one. Sorry if I'm a bit racist. Dealing with the theme of getting jobs when people know that they're superheroes. <clears throat> and so they discuss and kind of regret making their identities public. Anyway, as they enter the planet of Oa, <clears throat> it is mentioned that Hal Jordan is no longer Green Lantern, so it's not set long after this. <clears throat> now, the tone of the two comics seem very similar. The main difference seems to be uh, that 
Green Lantern Corps focuses on a group rather than just an individual, which, as far as I know, is how it went with the previous run. Anyway, as I promised, I managed to get an issue of Hawkman. <clears throat> now, after seeing the preview for it at the back page of uh, some of the new 52 released in that week, what appealed to me was the painted colors. I mean, I really like it when a uh, comic get artistic. But um, I don't like things getting to it, just for the record. Like when they get super realistic, like when I reviewed uh, the, an issue of 2000 AD I picked up from England. <clears throat> anyway, it deals with the... Um, what's his name? Um, yes. Carter Hall, and he wants to give up being a superhero, but so he buries his costume and burns it. But it seems to come out and try, appears to try to kill him, but um, he wakes up only mildly injured. Now I find it very interesting how different comics start at, of the New 52 start at different places. I mean, again, DC Comics stated that they wouldn't be starting at the beginning. Although, in the case of some team uh, comics, it pretty much has. But anyway, I find it interesting how it starts at different points in people's lives, heroes' lives, for some comics. <clears throat> it seemed to me that, in some ways, they haven't completely start again. I mean, they've just continued their continuity, but change a few events here and there. Anyway, <clears throat> as Carter comes across some uh, monsters, his uh, costume wraps around him, even though he doesn't have it. The artwork of this is really quite spectacular, and not just because it's painted, the colors are painted. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can really say about it. And anyway, we I'll be reviewing Batman Dark Knight once it comes out. And now to the best and the worst of the new 52. Best Batman comic? This doesn't sound very original, but Batman. Not just because it's basically the central uh, if issue around a uh, central series around Batman, but because the art works so well for a Batman comic with lots of shadows and the way how Batman and uh, Cape and Cal seem more black than grey. Most surprising issue. Aquaman. And DC Comics stated that the <clears throat> the villain introduced in this would probably be the most talked about new character in the new 52, and they're probably right. Best non-Batman comic? Animal Man. Why? Because, like I've said, it's more than just a superhero comic. It's a horror drama where the main character happens to be a superhero. And worst out of the new 52? Red Hood and the Outlaws. Why? Because the fact that Red Hood is apparently supposed to be less obsessed with Batman isn't consistent with the fact that he has a red hat on his chest and because Starfire has been turned into an almost emotionless slut. Anyway, that's all. I'll see you again once Batman Dark Knight comes out.